Lord and suffer our bodies that may be shown their work. So he who has that an Adam's way of good shall see it. And he who has that an Adam's way of evil shall also see it. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Thank you for the beautiful recitation and translation. Please have a lot for the work for them. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Now we would like to invite the students of section Zainab and section Fatima who will be presenting in the sheet. Please welcome them with a lot of love. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. May I stop it? Of the Islamic Institute. As you may all know, that Dawah Quran 
Illinois is Islamic Educational Institute for Children between the ages 5 to 15. The classes are held every Sunday morning. The teachers and volunteers have put immense time and effort from their daily lives for the betterment of the Islamic Institute and its students. In today's program, you will witness outstanding students being rewarded and recognized as they have brought honor to themselves and to the Quran. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, has said, The best of those amongst you is the one who learns the Quran and teaches it to others. Now I'd like to, who, this person has been involved in the Quran since its inception 11 years ago. Even before that, he was involved in the Eastern Mother Song. This person is a wonderful principal and teacher. I would like to call up Brother Hamid to say a few words. Salam alaikum wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. I wish Maulana Bakri is here, but I start with all of Maulana Bakri, Maulana Asad Jaffrey, sister and brothers, audience of Dar al Quran at the Mahdi Center. Our prayers to those whom they died and they contributed to the Islamic teaching for our youth, like Brother Muhammad Mahmoud Rizmi, may Allah bless him. Allah said in Quran in Surah Al Mujadala, verses 11, Yarfa Allah Ladina Amanu, Minkum Waladina Utul Alima Darajat. Translation Allah will exalt those who believe among you and those who have knowledge to high ranks. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. Welcome to Dar al Quran Sunday School. A graduation ceremony at the end of the school year is always such a special occasion. The culminations of years of hard work and the acknowledgement of success achieved, our staff and administration are committed to helping each student work to their full potential. We all came together with a common purpose in mind, is to encourage and to develop lifelong learning in the young ladies and gentlemen who are attending the meeting this morning. Dar al-Quran will continue teaching the reading of the Holy Quran, the seer of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and the Arabic language special classes taught by Sister Nabira. Day by day, we focused on our goals, working together, and look at the progress, alhamdulillah, we need. The guidance and effort of Maulana Bakri, Maulana Asad Jaffrey, Said Kambar, our school coordinator, our treasure sister Batul Jaffrey, Brother Muhammad Ali Sheikh, Brother Mohsin Rada, and all the volunteers and teachers. And I like to recognize those teachers by name. Maulana Asad Jaffrey, Brother Azhar, Azhar Abbas, Sayyid Zain Jaffrey, Sister Sittin Fatima, Sister Safia Rizbi, Sister Shehista Ali, Sister Intisar Bayram, Sister Shahri Bandu, Shahri Bandu Banu, and Sister Nabil Ali. And on the admin team volunteer, I'd like to recognize Sayyid Kambar Raza, Muhammad Ali Sheikh, Batul Jaffrey, Zahra Hasnain, Ali Asad, Fazian Haider, Mohsin Raza, Irfan Mohsin, and Mohil Asad. I have been touched by the dedications of all volunteers and teachers that are doing their part in Dar al-Quran with love and humbleness. Every year, Maulana Asad Jaffrey gives the lectures to the mature student at Dar al-Quran, the valid one, the mature one, to teach them Islamic obligations and accountability. Each male and female valid student are to be taught with a taklif al-shara'i, and the role of the men and women in the society. Unfortunately, there is a trend in the society that causes confusion to some of our youth. That is why Islamic education is very important, especially in the early childhood. There is a well-known sentence saying, what is learned young and is hard to lose. And in Arabic, al-ilmu fi al-sibari al naqshi ala al-hajar. Teaching and learning early age is similar to engraving on a stone. The future is yours, and you and on you and the community will be inspired by our student reading the Holy Quran 
and the various supplication in Ramadan, as well supervised by Brother Muhammad Ali Sheikh this year and the last year, and on Thursday night and Friday night for each week. Nothing can be more effective in motivating the student and sustain success in school than celebrating the student accomplishment. Celebrating success in our school system facilitates more success. At Dar al-Qur'an school principal, as a principal, along with Sayyid Asad Jafri, Sayyid Kambar, Sayyid, uh, Brother Muhammad Ali Sheikh, Sister Batul, and Brother Mohsin Raza, and all the respected teachers, all the respected teachers and volunteers, we all are more than willing to do what it takes to make our school an outstanding institution, where our students are nourished through mind, body, and soul by teaching our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and Ahlul Bayt, and Ahlul Bayt Such mission will not be possible to accomplish without the full support and cooperation of our parents who are attending today and not for some reason, and the community at large. May you always lead by the example of Muhammad and Al-Muhammad and our Imam Al-Zaman alayhi salatu wa salam. And finally, I love you all. I wish you, uh, you will have a great summer that is full of useful learning. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Uncle Hamid. Imam Jafar Mir Muhammad al Sadiq has said, Three things will complain to Allah the noble and the grand on the day of judgment. A deserted masjid in which the people of the town did not recite salah. In. An alim who was among the ignorant ones, however, the people did not make use of him. And the Quran, which was not read and was left for dust to collect on it. Now we would like to request Marana Baki for his words of wisdom. Marana Baki does not need any introduction and he has been a beacon of knowledge in the whole community. Please welcome Marana Baki with the last Salah. So later on. He's not here. He's not here. Marana Baki is in here, but his presence remains. We will start awarding the students of Section Zainab, Level 1. All students of Level Zainab will get the same awards and there are no positions. To distribute the awards, I would like to call up President of CIG, your Uncle Ghulam Abbas Murtaza, and Chair Lady, Sister Asma Jahan Murtaza. Please re recite your lots of awards. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Elia Mirza. Do you hear your name? Please come up. Yeah. Hijab Zahra. It is a buzzer. Muhammad Zahra Ali Zaidi. 
محمد و آل محمد سهرا فاطمه صلى على محمد و آل محمد سهرا محمد رضا اللهم صل على محمد و آل Thank you students of level 1. You may go back to your seats now. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. We will start awarding the students of section Zainab level 2. All students of level Zainab will get the same awards as there are no positions. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Azan Nakwi, Isha Raza, Isha Raza, Fatima Ali, Fatima Ali, Hadi Abbas, Hussain Sayyid Nasser Raza. Khizr Raza Jafri, Manahil Fatima Abbas, Muhammad Yahya Hussain Zaidi, Musa Abbas, Sakina Fatima Abbas, Sayyida Abiha Jafri, Sayyida Kulsum Fatima Musli, Thank you students of level 2, Muhammad Ibrahim Hussain Zadi, Thank you students of level 2, you may go back to your seats. Now we would like to request Mawlana Bakr for your words of wisdom. Salat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Salat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Thank you guys, thank you. Thank you guys. Mufarad Amri ilallah. Inna Allah basiran bil ibad. ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله آل الله لا سيما بقية الله في الأراضين صاحب العصر والزمان عجل الله تعالى فرج الشريف الله صل على محمد وعلى محمد بهم نتولى ومن أعدائهم نتبرأ إلى الله ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا واختنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به وعفونا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين أما بعد فقد قال الله وهو أصدق القائلين وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن. I begin in the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful. I'm sorry that you're late. I am. I think my name has been called. and was missing. As I still am missing. I, I cannot find myself. Uh, this says 
أجبت لمن ينشد ضالته ولا يتلب نفسه. It is very strange when a person loses something, he searches intensely according to the price which he has lost. Unfortunately, he has lost himself. He is not searching. So these madrasas to search the self and what is the way, <clears throat> yes, our children should be imploring in this world of becoming professionals and successful people in this part of the world. It's very important. While we are doing is, we should never forget our purpose of life is something else. The Quran teaches us what is the purpose of life. I am not going to give long lecture. I will give you some <clears throat> inside about Darul Quran. I request all of you to keep on seeing Darul Quran rather than Sunday Madras. We initiated this Darul Quran. 11th of November 2012, the first day of Darul Quran. And we planned it before, of course, for three, four months after the closing of Eastern Madrasa, there was a challenge. We need to do something exclusively in this part of the world, Pickering and etc., Eastern part of it. And there, case, the question came that. Uh, there is no accommodation place here, we don't have much room, etc. I said, let's start inshallah when we go to the <coughs> bigger place, we, have, we can expand ourselves. And we have assigned some of the duties to our brothers, Abdul Sami, brother Abdul Sami, he is from beginning involved in this. Darul Quran, may Allah increase his tawfiqat. And brother Mazhar was taking care of the technical aspect of his classes. And class arrangement initially has been given to brother Ali Abbas Mirza. I don't know how many of you remember. And again, another brother who, who is from beginning with us, brother Ali Sheikh, Muhammad Ali Sheikh. May Allah increase his tawfiq. Another thing we ask, we all of us have to remind ourselves, Al Mahdi organization is the only organization in the northern, northern hemisphere, North America which initiated, initiated an alim for youth assigned. None of even big organizations there, still they have in GTA, they don't have an alim for the youths. Unfortunately, we could not, okay, thank you, ne'matun ka agar sahi sambalein ye nahi haas nikal jata. To hum nahi sambal sakhe to, he is gone, but still with us, he is, MashaAllah, in ki apni ek mehrwani hai, he is with us. Otherwise, Asad Jafri was the person supposed to take care of the, this Darul Quran. Alhamdulillah, he is taking care of. I was here for three years uh, constantly. I was coming whenever I am in the city. And slowly I hand it over totally in the hands of the good people at this center. I have uh, one painful reminder to our parents. It's not for us here, it is for the entire world. I think many of you, you know, I go all part of the world. Allah has given me that opportunity. From East, name it, 
New Zealand, Australia, many, many cities in the world, Africa, Central Africa. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Auzain and Ashkur and Ahmadakallati and Antalaya wala wala dayya. One aspect I learned is, we as parents are not committed to our religion. Bringing children, living at Darul Quran or any Sunday madrasa or Saturday madrasa in the world is not the remedy. Parents must uh, involve in teaching a bringing of their children. Teachers are the reminders only. The majalis are the reminders only, inspirational factor. The parents themselves have greater heavy responsibility. Many of the parents, they don't even ask their children what they learn in the Quran or Sunday Quran, or Saturday Quran. I'm talking about majority. Uh, and I'm involved, I was in Eastern Madrasa for 33 years. I have seen from my own eyes. When it comes to religion, religion is something, is a sidewalk, not a main stream of our life. Islam says, Ehdena Sarat al It is not sidewalk, it is even life. If you don't follow this life, you don't have life. Ya ayyuha al-ladhina amanu istajibu lillahi wa li rasooli idha da'akum lima yuhiikum answer to the call of Allah and the Prophet so that you may gain life otherwise you don't have life having good house, a car and etc. lavish life is not life that is the perspective of Quran we have to learn that we have to inject this into the next generation that is a challenge. This pain, instead of telling myself, let's go 1400 years before, our blood of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad. That is part of life. What can we do? That is my part. روي عن النبي أن صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم الله صل على محمد وآل محمد. It has been narrated by our beloved prophet أنه نظر إلى بعض الأطفال. He saw some of the children at that time playing and having good times. فقال. Then our beloved prophet said, "وَيْلُ لِأَوْلَادِ آخِرِ الزَّمَانِ." How many of us we admire na about Nostradamus prophecies? You have heard his name. Nostradamus is the one whose prophecies, 35% of his prophecies became true. And we are presenting the personality whose 100% prophecies became true. Unfortunately, we don't know. This is one of the prophecies of the Orbital Prophet. Prophet says, Oh, to the children of the last hour. This is the last hour. Inshallah, very soon, Imam is coming. Qiyamah is coming. Faqila, Ya Rasulallah, Ya Rasulallah, Min abahim al mushrikeen. You are talking about children of mushrikeen. Prophet said, No. Faqila, Ya Rasulallah, Man, man hum? Faqala, لا من آبائهم المشركون بل من آبائهم المؤمنون. The children of مؤمنين مسلمين. Why? This is the reality, brothers and sisters. When we start the Quran, one of one paragraph, every parent has to write. That is covenant. That covenant is, I will going to spend. 15 to 30 minutes with my children every day. I think we have to reinstall that. If you remember, if you remember those who are pioneers here. Every parent has to write with their hands 
this covenant, this tawseed. I will going to spend, we will going to spend with our children 15 to 30 minutes every day. Otherwise, I'm only bringing you to Darul Qur'an or any madrasa is not. Even majlis is not going to give you anything. Why? Look at the reason. Let's, I'm Urdu me kate chalo, tatul apne zameen. Let's search soul ourselves. La yu'allamuhum, la yu'allamuhum shay'an min al-fara'id. Why all do these parents? Because they don't teach the fara'id of religion. Fara'id is the obligations of religion. And another part of this is very scary. وَإِذَا تَعَلَّمُوا أَوْلَادَهُمْ مَنَعُوهُمْ If you teach them, they say don't. They say, no, no, I'm only one of them. 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 We don't want much involved. We don't want to make my son or daughter as an alim or as an alim. That means, I'm only one of them. 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 That is our attitude. Still, this is attitude. وَإِذَا تَعَلَّمُوا أَوْلَادَهُمْ Why don't we go to the majalis in which an alim is speaking and may waking you up. We are happy with the alim who says تُمْ جَنَّتْ مَنْ جَاوَغَيْ تُمْ جَنَّتْ مَنْ We are happy. Oh, چلو بھی فری میں جنت مل رہی ہے کچھ بھی کرنا نہیں ہے یار. We don't need. Such an attitude has to be changed. Such a thinking has to be changed. And this is the Dara of Quran. This is Sunday Madrasa. This is the place where we can change our attitude. Scary. They are comfortable with what they need this dunya man. Sara namaz sukun deti hai, it gives me with comfort. Let's pray namaz, thoda sa charity de de, let's give that. That is not religion. Fa inna min hum bari. Prophet says, they don't like me. Not only they don't like me, I don't like them. Surah Baraat, you know, bari means, I am disowning them. Prophet says, I am disowning them. They are not with me. I am not. I am very sorry. Uh, the reason I present here, because this is an annual day. Parents, wake up, wake up, wake up. It is too late when your son comes and says, Aapki bahu ye hai. Hindu hai koi baat nahi hai, ye musalman ho jai. Christian hai koi baat nahi hai, musalman ho jai. Ye hai ki aapka damad ye hai. It's going to be too late. Us waqt galiyan dena, ulama ko, centers ko, madrasan ko, kuch hone wala nahi hai. You and me has to wake up now so that we can protect the next generation. Daro Quran is unique. Why we made it Daro Quran? We want all the lessons to start with the Quran and give, and give insight from the Quran. Namaz Aqimu Salaam. Zakat. Atu Zakat. Rawa and a fast is Kutib alaykum asiyam. Everything inspired by the Quran. Inshallah I hope. I am sorry. I am very sorry for this. Please parents, let's do something together. All together we can do miracles inshallah. I hope inshallah we will grow faster and pray for the next and which is delay we have. May Allah soon this path starts construction of our world and where we can inshallah teach our four five hundred to one thousand children in this in that part of the center. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Thank you Muhammad for those who check for words. Peace and Allah to Allah for the health of Allah. 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 Allah.
Mona Sajafi has been a great teacher for the past years. He's taught us a lot about Islam, aqaid, fiqh, and history. He makes sure that we learn while having a good time. His lectures create hope and motivation, especially in the youth, and we are very lucky and privileged to have him as our teacher in the Quran. Now I'd like to call up Mulana Sajafi for his speech. Salat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Guys, put me right after Mulana was never a good idea. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين وهو خير الناصر المعين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين صلى الله عليه وسلم Everything that had to be said was already said by Mulana and I'm thankful to him for his his true and his direct comments and I wanted to just lean on that a little bit. I wasn't sure how this year would turn out, to be honest with you. I was a little bit skeptical about a post-COVID Dalai You know, we worked, I didn't work very hard, Umar Bhai, Sheikh Saab, the entire team worked very hard to somehow navigate through COVID. The parents were very, very supportive. I am very thankful to all of you. One year we were completely online. Next year we had the hybrid system, if you remember. One year was online, one year was on-site. And that was a challenge for some parents. Because some parents had some kids in level Ali, others in level Muhammad, so every week they were here. Somehow arranged for one kid to be online and one kid to be on-site. But you supported us in that. And I won't forget that year. And then we came to this year. This year was a completely post-COVID world where we removed any online options. We had students that were logged in all the way from Dubai, all the way from Phoenix, Arizona, all the way from Cleveland, Ohio, from London, UK, were all logged into our Dawah Quran Sunday morning classes. And this year we took all that out. I wasn't sure what the reaction would be of the parents, of the students, but I think this year was, to me, the best year of the Quran. Uh, and partly because of the sheer numbers of kids that came out, I think that we had 115, 100 and? 120 kids every Sunday. My level Ali class, which I teach, which is the 12, 13 year olds, there was, I think, 40 kids in that class. And me, alone, Tanha, Muslim, with these 40 old kids. 40 kids. No Allah. <laughs> no aid, no help, no Ansar, no Sahabi, nothing, just me. Yeah. Allah is there. Allah is there, yes. Allah was there a lot. Every Sunday with me. And then level Muhammad. I think level Muhammad, we had the highest amount of kids. Otherwise, one year we had three or four kids in level Muhammad. That's the highest class, where they're anointed to be there on Sundays, the grade nine phase. This year, I think we had an entirely packed class, and consistently every Sunday. And I'm, first of all, I'm thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, really. It showed me a lot. I have a lot of hope today, a lot of hope today. I'll tell you why. I'll give you a couple reasons, and then I'll wrap up. I won't be too long, I promise. Number one is that, I wish some of you parents, and some of you did, you would witness the discussions I would have in my classes. There were moments where I had to stop the questions to move on to the next verse. We weren't getting through the book because they had so many questions, because they wanted to take part in the discussion. There was a couple of kids who would consistently, I would start the question, I wouldn't even finish the question, and their hand would be up. And I know they don't know the answer. How could you know the answer? I haven't finished the question yet. And so when I asked them, yes, go ahead, what's the answer? They would then think about the answer when their hand was up. And it just shows me that they wanted to take part in that dini discussion. They weren't shying away from it. They weren't annoyed by it. They weren't upset by it. And so that to me was something that was very, very helpful to me that consistently they would enter 
uh, every Sunday with this need and desire to want to learn. You know, in a, in a time where there are distractions everywhere, you know, Surah Al-Luqman, verse number six, very quickly. I came across this verse, I, I did some study for it, I, I, I was blown away by this verse, and really that's what we want. We want these children to be wowed by the Qur'an, to understand that the Qur'an is a miracle. Why? Because in every era, it's relevant in that era. It's as if those verses were revealed for us at that moment today. Allah coins a term called Lahu al hadith in Surah Al-Quran. And I want you to understand a little bit of what this term means. Okay? The verse says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي لَحْوَ الْحَدِيثِ There are those men, amongst those uh, the men, who use or who take something called لَحْوَ الْحَدِيثِ Now, hadith we know to be something narrated possibly, that was spoken. لَحْوِ means something that's بِهُدِ بِفَائِدِ Distracting, no purpose, no hadaf, no, you know, something like an amusement, a waste of time almost. But you put those two together, and you can sit there and, and talk about the idea that this is uh, purposeless talk. I would use useless content as a proper translation. The Quran 1400 years ago, saying there are those that use useless content They use this useless content to deviate from the path of Allah without even knowing it. Useless content back then didn't have much meaning to it. But today, surely, we can know in a very Instagram world what useless content is. And some of, the, some of us spend hours scrolling and scrolling and scrolling watching monkeys eat strawberries. A cat playing piano. Scrolling and scrolling. The Quran 1400 years ago, Lahwa al Hadith. Useless content. And without even knowing it, through that content, they would what? They would leave an sabilillah from Allah's path. In that world of distraction, in this world where they are presented as distraction, these kids in front of me, for them to come on Sundays and take part in animated, heated conversations with me uh, in Lava Allah Muhammad was nothing more for me than a hopeful, hopeful world. There's this nagi inside your children. There's a thirst for the deen inside your children. They're not quite out of the, at that stage where they are annoyed by the deen. Still, right now, many of you, if your kids are here, I can tell you my level Muhammad class, we had talks about gender, about identity, about music. And they would challenge me, yes, but Mulana, what about this Mulana? What about this Mulana? They wouldn't accept everything I was saying, and that's what I wanted. This boldness they have, that only this generation have, has, shows me they were not willing to accept or inherit the deen, they want to believe in the deen. That's beautiful. You know, Malana and I, Malana mostly talks about the idea of the home, the home, the home. You all of you know the triangle of tarbiyat. Three points to a triangle. The home, the masjid, the madrasa. And the top, the most sharpest, brightest of points is the home. All three have to be in sync. You have to bring your children to the mosque, whichever mosque you go to, where they're able to learn in their language something that's useful, not lahw al hadith. You have to have them involved inside the home, give them a fighting chance. Last week, Dr. Ahmed mentioned we had a Baloo class here. This hall, for me, for my class, was filled all the way till the end. 50 students shaped out, right? 50 boys came for my Baloo class. And we talked about everything. Things that you would <laughs> be so embarrassed of as adults. We were very open, because the, the dean is open. The questions they would ask me, they would pull me aside afterwards. Marana, this happened to me in my body. What do I do about that? How do I kick this habit? What do I, and they were very open with me. They didn't want to accept the reality of this morally bankrupt society. They wanted more for themselves. And we have to give them more. Give them a fighting chance. Don't assume that what happens on Sundays here in Dar al-Qur'an is meant to replace what's done at home. It never was meant for that. It was always meant to reinforce what's done at home. Four hours is nothing. We need everybody involved, inshallah. And part of that is to develop a connection with the Qur'an. You know, Imam Khomeini refers to the Qur'an as Naumiya Ishq Asqurah. Love letters from Allah. Love letters from Allah. 
Back then, before social media, before smartphones, we used to write letters to each other. If the husband was gone for weeks and weeks and weeks, we'd write letters to the, to the wife. The wife would read it, the husband would read it over and over again, keep it, put it in the box, love letters, go back and, and revisit it. Once again, you know, those emotions and those feelings and, the, and those feelings were all there. But now those are, that's all gone. But Allah says, Imam Khomeini says, these are letters of Allah. There are love letters from him to his beloved. The more we read them, the more that love is reinforced. We're reinforced. So we want to make sure that we develop that love of Allah, the love of the deen. And believe me, as someone who's taught your kids for the past year, they have an immense, intense love for the deen. That love has to be fed. Not just on Sundays, every single day. So I'm thankful. I'm thankful to the admin. I'm thankful to Milano for his constant... He claims he's not here, but I asked him about everything. This year we made a massive change in our curriculum. And I'm thankful to, first of all, my Arabic teachers, who were able to adjust to that change. We removed the Arabic language and we replaced it with a Quran appreciation course, which wasn't an easy transition for some people. We brought on some great teachers, like Sister Shehavan and others, other, other teachers, who taught this from the very first day. Again, to develop a love of the Qur'an, and our every teachers were supportive of that. And I'm grateful to them for that, inshallah. In the end, my du'as. My du'as for all of you as parents, and these incredible children in front of us. That inshallah, we develop this uns ba Qur'an, this love of the Qur'an, not just reciting it, but practically applying it in our life. It's meant for a constitution. A point that Mulana, I've learned from him several, several times, he, we've had this conversation in private talks. He would say that the constitution of Imam Mahdi is the Qur'an. My last point. The constitution of his government is the Qur'an. We know that, you know that. He will lead according to the Qur'an. If we want a seamless transition from our life without him and our life under him, let's begin by making that Qur'an also our constitution today as well, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to first of all bless these incredible children in front of me. Give them a fighting chance against immorally bankrupt society, inshallah. Give them a love for Allah, a love for the Quran. And finally to my parents and my family out there, I know a lot of you are working very, very hard. I see that Allah sees your efforts in ensuring that you are raising the army of the Imam. I ask you, I ask Allah to continue to bless all of you in your four homes, inshallah, and to make you those who are successful in this world. And hereafter, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Mawana Sujafi, for the wonderful words. Now we would like to invite the talented students from various levels for presenting the play on the event of Mabahila. We are very thankful to Sister Shahibana, Sister Manas, and Sister Badu Jafri for the help of this. Please welcome them with the loud salawat. After the conquest of Mecca, when Islam started spreading rapidly and the warring groups came under the flag of Islam, the Holy Prophet started sending missionaries to the tribes who had not yet accepted Islam. One of the letters was sent to the Christians of Narjan. The letter stated, in the, name of, in the name of the God of Ibrahim and Ishaq, Isaac, and Yaqub, Jacob. This is a letter from Muhammad, the prophet of God to the bishop of Narjan. I praise the God of Ibrahim, Ishaq, and Yaqub, and invite you towards the worship of God and away from the worship of servants. I invite you to leave the mastership of the servants of God and come under the mastership of God. And if you do not accept my invitation, you must pay taxes to the Islamic government. And in return for this small sum, it will defend your life and wealth. And otherwise, you are notified of danger.
How dare Muhammad send this letter to us? There's no way. The person in our holy book is called by Ahmad. And this person is called Muhammad. What if these two are the names of the same person? If that's the case, the best way of knowing is by meeting him. So let's send a mission to Medina and have a dialogue with him. After deliberations, the Christians finally decided to send a mission to Medina and have a dialogue with the Muslims. A delegation of Christians headed by Al-Aqib and Abu Al-Harith started off for Mecca. Abu Al-Harith was regarded as the greatest bishop and scholar of the Christian world of the time, and Al-Aqib was the biggest strategist and negotiator of the time. When the delegation reached Medina, the people were impressed by their lavish dressing and pomp and show, since it was the first time that a delegation had arrived in such a manner. When they entered the Masjid al nabi the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at the precious stones and gold and silk clothes that they were wearing and turned away his face and did not pay any attention to them. After a while, when no one noticed their pomp and show, they left the mosque and met Usman bin Afwan and Abu Rahman bin Af outside and asked them as to why they were invited by the Muslims and then treated in such a manner. We are here from the northern mountainous regions of Yemen to have a dialogue with Muhammad. But why is he not giving us any time to discuss? I would suggest you should consult with Ali ibn Abi Salim. He would definitely know the reason. You are wearing silk clothes and you are wearing dresses of silk and ornaments of gold which they surprise. You should take these off and dress simply. Only then will the Prophet would want to meet and entertain. Okay. Discuss about your letter and Christ. Sure. Let the dialogue begin. We are here to uh, know about Christ and what you think about him. We believe that he is a servant and messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He belongs to Kalam Allah, who was born by Virgin Maryam alayhi salam. Adam to a date, from Adam al to a date, he, there was no person that, that was born without a father. So doesn't this make Almighty his father? Just because they don't have a father does not mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their father. If Jesus, peace be upon him, does not have a father, then who is his father? What about what about Adam? Was he not a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who eat, sleep, drink, relieve himself, and cohabit? Yes, he was. Then, who was his father? Then what about him? Who was his father? Uh, verily, the similitude of Jesus with Allah is the, is the similitude of, with Adam. Uh, Allah created him out of dust, then told him to be, and he became. Do, do not be the ones, do not, uh, do not be the ones to, to not accept the truth. But this is the verse from God, which means that if Jesus miraculously birthed 
is significant proof that he should be regarded as either God or as the son of God, then there are even stronger grounds to apply this to Adam. For while Jesus was born without a father, and Adam was born with neither father nor mother. However, when we look at our religion, we still think this is a righteous one. At this point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse of Surah al Imran. And should anyone argue with you concerning him, after the knowledge that has come to you, say, Come, let us gather our children and your children, our women and your women, ourselves and yourselves. Then let us sincerely invoke Allah's curse upon the liars. Let us bring our sons and your sons. Our women and your women. Ourselves and yourselves. And let us invoke Allah's curse upon the liars. This is fair. We agree. Sure. Let us meet outside of Medina tomorrow morning and invoke Allah's curse upon the liars. If he challenges us with his people, we accept the challenge, for he is no prophet. If he, but if he challenges us with his family, we do not accept the challenge, for if he brings up his family, he's not He's not what? The next day. Who are those? <coughs> this is his cousin and successor, and his son-in-law. This is his daughter Fatima, and his grandson Al Hassan, and his son Al Hussein. O oh Christians, surely I see the faces that if they ask Allah to remove a mountain from its place, He would surely remove it. Therefore, do not do mubahila, otherwise you will be perished, and there will not remain any Christian on the face of the earth up to the day of the resurrection. O oh, Abul Qasim, we have decided not to do the malahid against you. As for we leave you with your religion and our religion with us. Seeing such glory and grandeur, the Najran chiefs lost their self-confidence and felt that they were very puny and could not stand against Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And his household. They therefore accepted to pay Jazia and offered to give into peace. On behalf of the Holy Prophet, the commander of the faithful, Ali signed a peace treaty with the Christians. The Christians were to annually offer 12,000 exquisite clothes, a thousand mithlaq of gold, and some other items to remain Christians under the umbrella of Islam. The purpose of Mabahila was to show the Christians the matters in which they had been led away from the truth in their religion. In addition, the act of the Prophet in bringing Fatima Salam alayhi, Imam Ali alayhi salam, Al Hassan alayhi salam, and Al Hussein alayhi salam demonstrated to history that in, the, in matters of belief in the oneness of God, prophethood, and the Quran, one should turn towards them for guidance. The Prophet's action was in order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, called our sons and your sons, our women and your women ourselves and yourselves. This was an evident declaration that in the matter of prophethood and the Quran, Muslims have need of the authority of the Ahlul Bayt to clarify the meaning of the Holy Quran for those who did not comprehend. On the day of Mubahila, it became manifest that in the absence of the Prophet in matters of religion, the people should turn towards none other than the Ahlul Bayt.
Thank you very much for the amazing play. Please have lots of love for the encouragement of the participants and teachers. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Imam Jafar ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq has said, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Imam Jafar ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq has said, I would like to see a Quran in every house so that through this, Allah will repel the safety from that house. The administration, the administration team spends countless hours working behind the scenes with parents, teachers, and volunteers to ensure that the day-to-day -day activities of Darwan run smoothly. Now I would like to welcome Darwan Administrator Umber Umber to represent the Darwan Report for 2022 to 2023. Well, that's a lot. So first of all, it was you know really nice to see such a nice uh, play, and I really appreciate teachers and uh, all the students. It's been like I think three or four years after that you know we were having such a you know, nice play and nice occasion. Uh, so Molana Sir and Molana uh, uh, we have already covered. Uh, our principal, Dr. Hamid, have already covered you know what Dal Quran is all about. So I'll go right in, into the statistics. Uh, so let's start this slide show, you may. So this year we had 114 registrations, which was like uh, you know uh, uh, a record, I would say, considering. And last year we had around 60 because of COVID. So. Uh, a lot of participation, a lot of uh, you know uh, parents uh, showing support to the Darul Quran and making sure that their kids uh, are coming in. And no, keep go back. So out of that, we had section Zainab, 26 students, uh, section Fatma, which is seven to nine years old, 29 students, 23 students, and Levil Ali as Maulana. Uh, you know, Sat have already mentioned 41 students. This is the largest level in any class we uh, have ever had. And then level Muhammad, which is our 13 plus student, uh, we had 24 of them, and they will be graduating inshallah today. All right. So there were few things uh, different uh, this year compared to last year. And again, I just try to uh, go through it uh, pretty quickly. First of all, we had in-person classes almost uh, after three years, uh, but we kept uh, you know uh, uh, lessons and we have learned or expertise we have gained in zoom in case of inclement weather so for example if there is snow and other stuff we utilize zoom uh, to conduct the classes just to make sure that the students are not losing any hours of study uh, through pandemic we also the silver lining was we also learned about google classroom so we also maintained that capability and the assignments were given to the students on uh, google classroom and they were being submitted so that was a good thing and this year also we were back to four quizzes, which were the, uh, you know, the traditional Daru Quran way. You know, we used to have four quizzes and the students are basically judged on best of the three quizzes they have performed. Alright, so let's move on. Uh, the major change that we had this year was, uh, as Maulana Nasab mentioned, changes in the curriculum. So we replaced, replaced Quran uh, reflection. Uh, in place of the traditional Arabic language that we were having. It's a very great success, uh, you know, kids are enjoying it, teachers are enjoying it, and we are having, you know, a very good feedback from the parents about that one. Uh, but, you know, this doesn't mean that we left Arabic. So, on every Monday, we are having a advanced Arabic class conducted by our, you know, very experienced teacher, Sister Nawabara Ali. And this happens on every Monday, and I, you know, I would uh, recommend, you know, every person next year also, if you want to participate on Arabic class, it is available. Uh, now I will quickly go through the various activities that Daru Plan had uh, uh, last, uh, you know, year. So we had our traditional Bibi Fatma Salam Allah Alayhi Wasallam. 
Poster competition, uh, and you know the kids showed their uh, you know uh, expertise, their talent, and all the slides are available on uh, Daru Quran website. As well as you know, we have provided here a few examples of uh, uh, those posters. So if you get, if you can cycle through. Yeah. As you can see, you know, uh, these are the posters from different labels, and these are just a few examples. Similarly, we also had, you know, apart from the regular uh, curriculum, Eid al Fitr poster competition, and again, this was open for kids from label uh, Zainab all the way to label Muhammad, and you can see, you know, the hard hardworking uh, uh, Dal Quran students, you know, showed their talent here also, and again, there are a few of the examples shown over here. Complete slideshow and complete presentation is available on the Quran website if you want to, you know, have a look. Then we also had our annual Milad this year. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, because of the scheduling, we couldn't have the annual Majlis. We used to have traditionally have one Majlis and one Milad. But last year we only had annual Milad and there are some slides shows about that. A few, uh, you know, uh, slides about that. And, uh, Again, one other opportunity that we provide to all the parents to meet uh, the teacher and you know know about uh, the performance of their kids, how they can, you know, how they are performing, and what can be done. We have our annual parents teacher day, and in the annual parents teacher day, you can meet with the uh, you know teachers. There is uh, you know a, a Islamic movie normally in this man hall in which uh, kids can stay, you know have popcorns, enjoy their day. There is also, uh, you know, uh, some bake sale, and I hope we have slides. Yeah, bake sale so uh, you know kids and uh, parents can enjoy yummy food. And the end of the parents teacher day conclude with uh, the lunch for the teachers. So here, you know, you can see we have seen, you can see teachers sitting on the desk. I have not deliberately shown the picture which has lunch, because otherwise everybody will be feeling angry at this time. <laughs> so. Uh, and final thing, basically, we have is annual Baluch class. So this year we had we had a you know a, a phenomenal registration around 50 plus uh, boys and 60 plus girls basically attended, and you know had the opportunity to get the knowledge right from the audience, you know, instead of going uh, from third party. So that was a good uh, achievement on the Quran and on their teachers. All right. Finally, quickly going to the final slide. Moving forward, so this is what some extracurricular activities that we did uh, last year. Uh, but mo moving forward, we have you know few plans. First of all, uh, we will be just like uh, you know Quran reflection, doing some doing some modification in the research, keeping the existing one plus you know adding some additional resources or additional books to help our teachers out to you know, teach uh, the students much better. Secondly, inshallah, just like past year, uh, you know, we will try to introduce the family campaign. I still remember, I think six or eight years back, uh, uh, Mazhar Bai is here, we used to have uh, Dal Quran and Anwal Camp, and that is one thing which, at least uh, from myself, it bonded me to the Darul Quran. So hopefully, you know, inshallah, if, uh, you know, uh, we'll get uh, some support from Mazhar Bai and other, uh, you know, uh, senior people will try to introduce the family camping again. And finally, what we are working on uh, from last year is succession planning and transition. As you have been seeing us, uh, but there are a lot of uh, other new faces that you must have seen this year. The whole idea is to sort of make sure that, you know, uh, whether one person is here or not, the uh, Darul Quran remains here, it excels, and we will have new ideas. And well, alhamdulillah, this year we have a bunch of uh, new um, uh, you know, volunteers in the administration team, and later on, Muhammad Ali Bhai basically will be introducing them shortly. And my final slide, or second last slide, quickly. So as you can see, like all these functionalities of the Darul Quran, all these uh, you know uh, uh, events that we are having, there's a dedicated team behind. We have uh, teams uh, comprising of you know teachers coordinator, volunteer coordinator. We have IT PR coordinator, finance management, and database management. All these things going to the background. This is basically where we uh, want support from the parents also, and how you can you know help us out. If you can move to the next slide. Because we need you. I wanted to put Uncle Sam here, but thought probably it's not a good idea to put. So here we need parents to help us out. We need parent volunteers who can participate in you know these different committees uh, based on uh, 
uh, your attitude or, or whatever way you can help us out. So hopefully next year we'll be reaching out to the parents and hopefully you'll be able to you know uh, provide your help and support in terms of you know volunteering to the Dar al um, uh, team. Uh, with that, I think that was my life. last slide. Yes. So, Salwat and Amda, Lord Salwat and I will give it back to the... Oh, oh. 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 Yeah. No, Muhammad and Wa'ali, Muhammad. Thank you guys. Very nice. from the Adam Report. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, has said, I leave behind you two things, the Quran and my Sunnah. Follow these two and you will not be astray. We will start awarding the students of Section Fatima, Level 3. All students of Level Fatima will first get the same awards and then there will be a special award for the top three students. To distribute the awards, I would like to call up Moana Sul Raza and Sister Farwa Raza. Salat ala Muhammad wa ala Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Hassan Jaffrey, Ibrahim Ali Sayed, Hassan Jaffrey, Ibrahim Ali Sayed, Ibrahim Hader Zed, Ibrahim Hader Zed, Marzia Fatima, Sukaina Rizal. Sayyid Daim Mehdi Sayyid Hashir Abbas Rizvi Sayyid Hashir Abbas Rizvi Sayyid Fatima Rizvi Sayyid Fatima Rizvi Zain Akhtar Ahsan Hassan Jaffrey, Ibrahim Ali Sayyid, Ibrahim Hader Zaidi, Marzia Fatima, Sukaina Rizvi, Sayyid Dan Mahdi, Sayyid Hashir Abbas Rizvi, Sayyid Fatima Rizvi, Zen after Ahsan. Please say it last of all. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Now we will announce the top three positions. Zain Akhtar Ahsan, gold medal, Law Fatima 3A, Dinyat first, Quran Reflection first. Salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Marzia Fatima Gold, Level Fatima, Dinia third place, Kranz Reflection second place, Tadweed first place. Marzia Fatima. Marzia Fatima. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Sayyid Dan Mahdi, Silver, Level Fatima, Quran Reflection third, Tadweed second. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Ibrahim Ali Sayyid, Silver, Level Fatima, Dinia second place, Tadweed third place. Ibrahim Ali Sayyid. Thank you, students of Level 3. We will start awarding the students of Section Fatima Level 4. All students of Level Fatima will get the same awards, and there will be a special reward for the top three students. Fali has a hair cosmic. Muhammad 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 Hania Ali Kasmi Allah Salli ala Muhammad Muhammad Maryam Ali Allah Salli ala Muhammad 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 Muhammad
Now we will start awarding the uh, students of Section LE Level 6. I would like to call up Malana Sajafri and Operation Director of CIG Sister Tahir Afsan. Alina Abbas. Thank you. 
Ini kunci.
Silver Medal of Love Ali, Dunya Second, Quran Function Second, Tajweed Second. Muhammad Insha Hussain Zaidi, Silver Medal of Love Ali Eight, Dunya Third Place, Quran Function Third Place, Tajweed Second Place. Sayyidah Isha Zahra Rizmi, level Ali 6, Dimiyad 1st place, Quran Reflection 2nd place, Tajweed 1st place. Thank you students of level 8. You may go back to your seats. And thank you Malana Asad Jafri and Sir Tahir Hussain. Salam alaikum. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, has said, I advise you to recite the Quran and remember Allah much. For surely the Quran remember you, will remember you, do your dhikr in the heavens, and it will be a divine light for you on the earth. Salam ala Muhammad wa ala In order to perform the daily day activity of Dawah Quran, a team of volunteer works in the background to make everything happen. And for that very reason, I would like to welcome Dawah Quran volunteer coordinator, Uncle Nafai Wilson, for the recognition of the hard-working volunteers of Dawah Quran. Salaam Muhammad Wa Respected Maulana Sayyid Zadu Bhakri, Maulana Asad Jafri, Maulana Asad Raza, Principal Daru Quran, Dr. Sami, Elders, Teachers, Students, Monarchy, Guests and Bilal Prophet Fika Aslam Nari. I stand here today at the 11th Annual Daru Quran Recognition Day at Al Mahdi Islamic Center to express our sincere gratitude to those who have greatly impacted our community. We deeply appreciate the guidance and teaching of Maulana Sayyid Zaki Bhakti, Maulana Sayyid Jafri, and the principle of Daru Quran deserve recognition of providing a platform to learn the Holy Quran. Dr. Sami's dedication to improving this Daru Quran each year is truly admirable. We want to give a special thanks to Brother Bambar, Brother Muhammad Ali, Brother Faizan, Brother Mohsin, and Sister Bhutul Jafri and Sister Zaira Hussain for their consistent volunteer work. We highly appreciate it, Brother Ali Asad and Brother Mohil Asad for arranging pizza for Darul Quran students. We also acknowledge all the volunteers who have generously given their time and skill to our Darul Quran. These young and men and women demonstrated great disciplines and sacrificing their Sunday morning to ensure all the classes start on time and run smoothly till the finish. In addition to regular classes, all scheduled events such as quizzes, annual majalis, milad, group classes, parent-teacher meeting were executed perfectly. So I request to call upon Brother Jami Gopari and Sister Batul Jaffi to come and present an award of our occasion to our volunteer. Please come forward. I would like to call Zara Mufi come forward to receive her award. She is our girls league coordinator. Abbas Hussain Sayyid Fatima Shah Zainab Husky Hussain 
paz. Rhythm of 
The functions of Flower of Honor is managed by a dedicated administration team. This involves the registration, regular announcement, course material, financial bookkeeping, lunch arrangements, and live sim, CIG, and symphony, and numerous other tasks. A dedicated administration volunteer team no. tirelessly in the background for speed running of the DQ Dawakon function. Now I would like to invite Uncle Muhammad Ali Shaykh, who is a senior member of Dawakon admin team, to further elaborate on the admin team functions and recognize the admin team's volunteers. This is Ali Shaykh. Well, I'll be boys, please, guys. Gotta calm down a little. We're 10 minutes away. Okay, hang in there, please. Thank you very much. Respected Molanas, honorable members of the team. What? Teachers, parents, volunteers, family. So, I'm asked to come here at the last. So, the beauty of the last speech is that everyone is so bored. One. And the second is whatever I thought I would say, everyone, all, everyone okay. has already said it. So, <laughs> I won't bore you much. Uh, I mean, I just uh, want to give our thanks to everyone who stayed involved. Mashallah, we had a very good team this year. Some veterans, some people who are uh, with us for a couple of years, and some new faces as well. Last year, standing here, we, uh, we requested parents to come forward and join the team. And mashallah, some, uh, some, some people uh, did respond to that, and we had a few new team members who worked uh, with us during, the, during this year. And we are very thankful, and we are still putting in the same request. We want more help. So if your uh, parents can come forward, we will have fresh ideas and inshallah it's uh, for everyone, like uh, these are all community kids, are all of our kids and we need uh, your involvement to, uh, to have DQ operations run smoothly. So uh, this year, um, as I said, a wonderful team guided by Malana Said Jafri, our principal, uh, Dr. Hamid, uh, and uh, our leader, our administrator, Brother Khambar Raza, mashallah, a uh, very able person, he, he leads the team, he brings everyone on board, all the decision making, we do collectively and uh, Alhamdulillah this year, I mean, everyone has talked about a successful year, for me the highlight was level Muhammad 25 students. I mean, 14, 13, 14 years old, coming in every week, learning about the team, I think this is, this is really where, where I feel that I am privileged to be part of this operation. So uh, I would uh, so we will do a little recognition for our admin team. I would uh, like to call upon uh, Brother Ali Mazar to, to come up uh, for for volunteer recognition. And on the lady side, I would request the supply house. Salwar Bar Muhammad Wali. So we will be awarding certificates to the admin team members. I would call uh, Brother Irfan Mohsen. He is our volunteer coordinator this year. So every week, like setting up the school, and uh, at the end, like we have to put away everything in between, like pizza distribution. Everything is handled by our volunteers, and Irfan Bai has led the volunteer team uh, very uh, beautifully this year. <coughs> Sister Batuli Jafri, she is our uh, teacher's coordinator, so uh, she works with the teachers. Like last minute, we tell, we tell her this person is not, this teacher is not in today. She somehow manages to bring someone in for, to face that teacher, and uh, mashallah again, she has been here with us for a number of years uh, and doing very nice work with us. Uh, Brother Ali Asad. He's our finance guy, the money man. So uh, he's taking care of all of our finances. He works with the trainer of CIG. Uh, to, like whatever we need, we get we get to the trainer, and he's managing all, all of our finances. Brother Fezan Heather, he's our supplies manager. Yes.